so excited to be here. This is going to be a powerful conversation. If you're hopping on the YouTube live stream, say hello. Let me know where you guys are coming in from. Say hi. So I know who's here. If you know anyone who would value this conversation tonight, please share. Share it in your stories, share it on your page, send it to someone directly. my volume was turned up so loud saying if you know anyone who would value this conversation if you're catching this on youtube share like share send it to someone in a message share it in your story share it on your page this is going to be a good one say hello so i know who is joining me and we'll start in just a second If you are on the YouTube live stream, feel free to join me in Zoom so that you can share any questions or insights as we're going through the session. Talking about how to invite intimacy into your relationship. Thank you to everyone who's here. Thank you for joining me on YouTube. If you're catching this on the replay, it's an honor to have you here in the space. Um, and be sure, share your insights, share your questions as we go through this information today. Um, I'm hoping that it will bring up a lot of awareness, a lot of understanding for you today. And the reason that I wanted to go through this topic today is, oh yeah, we've got some people hopping in Zoom. Welcome, Jackie. So glad that you made it. Didn't think I'd be seeing you live. So glad. My okay. visitor, my visitor oh. changed, so, um, so I'm here. And then I'll oh. go to the beach after. Oh, yay, perfect. Yeah. Oh, good morning. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Yay. Okay. And hopefully, like I said, if you're on YouTube, come and join us in Zoom so that you can share any insights, share questions. It's, it's nice to be in the space together. Um, for some reason, I haven't figured out how to see the comments um, as I stream um, on YouTube yet, but okay. So today we're going into how to invite intimacy into your relationship. And the reason that I'm bringing this one in is because I've been talking to so many people recently about, about this, you know, like, is it normal to just, you know, really be in ruts for a long time? Sometimes is it, is it normal to just like feel complete unattraction to our partners sometimes? And so I feel like it's a really valuable conversation to have um, because, and this is what, this is what the whole conversation is going to be about today is really understanding again, what is normal and, and really change is the one thing that we can, that we are guaranteed. Um, but how do we, how can we move through it so that we don't get stuck there, right? Because we know we're going to have those rough patches. That is life, but we don't, it's like, you know, we've got to sit in our mud, but we don't have to stay there. So how can we start to begin um, bringing in an energy that is going to allow us to shift and come back to balance, come back to union sooner than later. Um, and really just for your own benefit, for the benefit of the relationship. So this is what the conversation will be around today. So really there's three things that I really want to go into today. The first one is looking at the laws of energy movement. And this is like what I was just talking about is that change is something that we can expect in life. It's the one thing that's guaranteed, but there's three other types of energies that are, um, this is what I teach in my 
um, sacred sex 101 uh, when I'm talking about orgasm. So it has to do with how energies move in a sexual relationship, but it's also relevant to the energies that are present in just the energy of a relationship. So first we're looking at the laws of energy movement. And then the next piece that we're going to look at, and this is this piece is what will change your relationship for the better. And this is understanding masculine and feminine energy. And so we'll look at five different, so we're looking at the masculine and feminine energy, and I'll speak more to it when we, when we get there, but also looking at five different um, spaces we can find ourselves within our relationship. Um, and really it has to do with, um, really our, uh, I want to say a level of maturity that we can show up in. And so when we can understand this, we can understand on how to cultivate it so that we can land in a place where both partners, whether male, female, or, or whatever, right so that with our partners, we can show up in a way where we are understanding each other. And then the last piece, of course, is looking at some embodiment practices. Um, so little practices, little practices that have big, that can bring big, <laughs> spitting over my words, that can bring big shifts. So it's little practices, but big energetic changes that they can cultivate when you are consistent and when both partners are really showing up to intentionally be present in that practice. So, um, so lots to look forward to. So definitely if you're um, hopping in and out, um, I encourage you to stay, especially if this is something that is relevant uh, in your world right now, stay until the end because those embodiment pieces are pieces that you can bring back into your relationship today, um, as well as, as whatever pieces you take from the conversation. So to start with, I want to open with looking at, at and understanding the laws of energy movement. So this is how, um, how we feel. Really, it has to do with the feelings that we will flow through in our relationship. So the very first one is repulsion energy. Repulsion energy is, whether we like it or not, something that we are going to feel in a relationship. When we are in repulsion energy, this is where we start to feel separation from our partner. So this is where we begin to find irritations with our partner and where we begin rather than generating closeness, it actually is where we begin to feel this like lethargy. We begin to feel tired and this heavy energy within our relationship, which like I said, this is what ends up making us sort of want to separate from this person. But if we can look at this and understand that there is energy movement in a relationship, and this is just one of the temporary waves, rather than allowing ourselves to sink into separation, we can actually choose to deliberately give more affection to begin to move out of it. That piece is, again, when we're talking about, you know, really wanting to bring a level of, of maturity and evolution and expansion into a relationship, making that deliberate choice to give more affection when you are in repulsion energy is going to be a way to instantly begin to see shifts. It's usually the last thing we want, <laughs> we want to do when we are feeling repulsion energy with our partner. So like I said, we can sit in our mud, but we just don't have to stay there. So, you know, give yourself the time to feel whatever it was that, that brought you into that wave, but then it's really that opportunity to be the bigger person and then deliberately say, even though I'm feeling like I want to have nothing to do with them, I'm going to do the exact opposite and I'm going to shift the energy and give more affection. When we can do this, what we'll begin to shift into is the second um, energy, is, which is adhesion energy. So adhesion energy comes up. It's the temporary bond that can come and go. And this is where we begin to feel friendly or just that casual aloofness that we feel with a person. And so this is, um, you know, in, for example, in a new relationship where you would start to feel those feelings of like, Ooh, I like this person. We're really clicking. Um, 
And then it can be that moment where if something happens that we don't like, we can slip back into that repulsion energy, or we can begin to, to build that adhesion energy, which will move us into the next one. Um, but first just speaking a little bit more about adhesion. So, um, this is the energy that we share when we are exploring attractions. So it's the feeling easygoing, that lighthearted connection, like feeling generally, I would say friendship, but if it could also be at that point in a friendship where you begin to question like, Oh, Hmm. Like, do I actually like this person in a romantic way? And that's what tends to draw you further into considering do is, is it time to create a deeper bond? Um, you know, what are the things that, that we would enjoy to do together? This brings you can bring us into, so two energies. Um, so change energy or full cohesion. So change energy, which like I said, is always present. So this is that energy. Um, it's the only thing that's predictable uh, because we know that it's always going to change. So change energy is really uh, present, I suppose, between any of these different laws. It can be how, you know, how we move from repulsion to adhesion to cohesion back to adhesion. So this is the beauty of change energy is being aware. And this is again, another one of those opportunities to be uh, in practice of being the observer to being in practice of being the witness. And, and this is this piece, right? Now you understand that there's these different laws of energy and you can begin to be aware of where you are in, in that cycle. It's just another cycle that you can be aware of that gives us a deeper understanding when we're trying to figure out what the heck is going on in our relationship right now, <laughs> right? We don't think about it so much when it's feeling really good, but when we're in that adhesion or repulsion energy, we are thinking like, what, what's happening here and how do I fix it? So being aware that change energy can come up in between any of those. Cohesion energy is what we really desire to get to. This is where we are when, when life feels good, where the relationship feels good. Um, sort of when we're in that bliss state, when we're really just like lovey dovey, loving on our partner. And this is when you are in cohesion energy, what it does is it really allows you to generate a charge. So the more that that charge is present, the more that you are cultivating that loving energy in the relationship. So it's a really good place to be because it tends to be expansive. Um, and again, being in that practice of witnessing that if that change energy comes in to understand, you know, why you might slip out of that cohesion wave. Um, when you are in cohesion, I mean, I think everyone can probably tap into the feeling of what it feels like when you're with your partner, but it feels really timeless. It feels ageless. It's like, you know, when you're with your partner and you're thinking, oh my God, I feel like we're just like 17 years old again. This is so delicious. It feels genderless. Um, really when you're just in that place of just being and just feeling a total openness, you're feeling a total sense of safety, totally surrendered in the relationship. And um, yeah, really in that union, it's when you feel fully unified with your partner. Um, and, in when you're in this space, so when you were in, in this wave of cohesion, like I said, it feels really expansive. So often it might be like that, that energy, that charge that's created between the two of you can really be a catalyst to, um, you know, to generating creative ideas together. There's going to be a lot of laughter and joy. You're going to feel really hopeful. You might be in a place where you're like really dreaming up things together and just a general sense of, of, Hey, things are really good right now. I feel really content and happy with life right now. So this is the laws of energy movement. So, so that I think is just a really great piece. Again, take that as an understanding. This is another cycle that you can bring into your relationship to understand where you are in terms of, of, in terms of right relationship with your partner. Okay. So the next piece, which this is a big one, because this is, this is so huge. And this, I think, um, and my, my husband even said, so quoted from my husband's words himself was when he was able to fully begin to understand masculine and feminine energies in our relationship, it completely changed his understanding 
and it's the same and same for me um, in understanding really what is going on in our relationship. So I just want to identify this because when we hear masculine and feminine, again, because of our conditioning, because of our programming, often we, we want to associate it right away to male and female. So masculine and feminine actually has nothing to do with gender. It is fully two energies that we embody. Every single one of us has within us, whether we are male or female, we have masculine and feminine energies. So uh, other ways in which we can look at this is yin and yang, um, hot and cold, sun and moon. Um, if you're familiar with the, with the Sanskrit um, uh, term of the, um, the central energy column, the Shashumna Nadi, the Ida and Pingala are the masculine and feminine energies that weave like the DNA helix up around that central column. So you can really take any of those concepts and, and sort of embody those with whatever anchors best. I really like sun and moon um, because that's really how I, how I see the masculine and feminine. Um, I'm going to use masculine and feminine just for the ease of communication today, but really let that anchor in that it, it has nothing to do with gender. So whether you are in a heterosexual relationship or not, every, everyone has masculine and feminine energy energies. The piece that I really find, um, and as, as I go through it today, hopefully this is what will also anchor for you. But when we find ourselves in more so of that adhesion or repulsion energy within a relationship or so, or just for ease of understanding, you know, when we are in this place where things might feel rocky, it's really interesting to have this understanding and kind of be able to, instead of getting pulled into conflict, be able to pause and with your partner go, wait a minute, who's showing up here, <laughs> here, because often what can happen is, um, is if someone, if someone in the relationship is showing up in their unhealthy masculine, what this will often do is for the other person who is more so in their feminine, it's going to bring out their masculine in, to protect, right? The protection energy is going to come through. So their masculine is going to show up. And what you will end up having is this masculine face-off, which is, it's just, no one's looking for that. I can guarantee that your partner, if, you know, if they're, des if they're desiring for whatever reason that they're showing up in their unhealthy masculine, which is, um, so unhealthy masculine traits are, um, you know, being self-absorbed focused on getting what a person wants using your skills for dominance, being overly critical or someone who needs to be right. So let's go with overly critical, for example. So if someone shows up in their unhealthy masculine, they're being overly critical of someone who's in their feminine, the masculine is going to show up to protect. So perhaps this person is being overly critical because they think, you know, perhaps that person should show up with more strength or more productivity or something like that. You're not going to get it that way <laughs> by being critical of someone. You're, you're just going to draw up the masculine and you're going, so if you're desiring more feminine energy to present, well, the last thing is the last thing you're going to get, you're going to get their masculine. So that's where the conflict comes up because all of a sudden you have this masculine face off the same goes for feminine. So if someone's showing up in their unhealthy feminine, which is, uh, you know, if someone's showing up um, as a victim, helpless, um, emotionally reactive, overly dependent, manipulative, um, or if someone's really stuck in a particular role, so if you're stuck in the role as mother, wife, lover, um, um, you know, work, worker, you'd be stuck in the role of your business. So if you're showing up in your unhealthy feminine, this might cause the other's toxic feminine to show up in the same way as, as catty, as hurtful, as manipulative. And really what you're going to get is like this feminine bitch fight. <laughs> 
So all of a sudden you have these two, like, you know, catty energies, or I really want to say like really slicing. I feel like that's where, you know, it gets, you really get that, like the cutting words uh, from one another. So all in all, if, you know, whoever is showing up for with whatever reason, whatever they're looking for, they're really calling out the exact opposite. So when you can have that moment to sort of pause and realize like, okay, you know, energy is a little bit hot right now. You're on the verge of the conflict to be able to stop and say, wait, how am I showing up? Like, is it my feminine? Am I in my masculine? And being able to, you know, together look at the situation, it's immediately going to give the opportunity to completely shift and not fall and spiral into the argument. Um, so this is why understanding the masculine and feminine energies and understanding how to cultivate them in a healthy way is going to be really profoundly powerful for your relationship. So when you are able to cultivate your inner masculine or inner feminine, what you're going to see is an increase in attraction within your intimate relationships, which I can guarantee is something that we would all love <laughs> even, you know, because yes, not so much when we're already there, but we know that change energy can be counted on. So knowing how to take ourselves back there sooner than later, and then also allows us to change the way, not only the way that we relate to our partner, but how we relate to all men and women. And I would even like to take it a step even further because I believe that we are really evolving there at this time, but it also changes the way in which we can relate to, to all energies. So it changes how we can relate to our business, right? Because the same thing, it's an energy exchange. So if we can understand that our business also shows up with masculine and feminine energies, if we can look at how we are engaging with it, then we can understand, you know, how to find that balance, the reciprocation, the union, the union with that. Um, and the same with, um, with the guides that we work with. So when we are aware of the energies, because again, that's an energy exchange. So when we understand, you know, the energies that we're um, interacting with, with spirit also. Um, okay. So so of course we want to understand masculine and feminine. The way that I want to speak through it today is we're going to look at five different ways in which we can navigate through our relationship. The first two are the ones when we are in this space in our relationship is often where we will find ourselves more frequently slipping back to adhesion or back to repulsion energy. So those two levels are when the relationship is stuck in self-focus or relationship focus. So uh, the reason that, and we'll often shift from self-focus to relationship focus when, as we're beginning, it's almost, it's like kind of like an uphill, <laughs> an uphill climb. Um, and many of us, because, and I'm not saying this, I'm, I'm certainly not calling any one of us immature, but the culture that we live in right now is very spiritually and sexually immature. It just is. And so when we can begin to understand these energies and, and understand uh, how we move through our relationships, this is sort of the uphill climb is, is this is how we begin to bring in a deeper level of maturity through just through a deeper level of understanding in our relationship. So, um, when we shift from self-focus to relationship focus, we come to that place where we will feel like something is seriously missing in the relationship. So, or sorry, that's the foundation. When, when we're in, in either of those spaces, we feel like something is really missing. Nothing's ever missing. We, we have everything that we need, but it really comes down to that mindset. If we're walking around thinking something is missing, um, we perhaps could have developed better communication skills, but our basic, what happens is our basic instinctual needs are really starving for expression. We don't know how to express our instinctual needs 
because of perhaps a lack of communication skills. So women are often saying about their their partners, they're saying, well, I want a more sens sensitive man, but I, I want a more sensitive man, but I desire stronger expressions of masculine. So you're having a totally po polarized desires. Do you see how it's almost hypocritical? I want a sensitive man, but I want him to show up more masculine. Um, and again, I'm, I'm saying men and women, but this is relevant to, yeah. Um, okay. And then men are saying, I want more powerful women, but I want her easygoing feminine energy to also be available. So it's the same thing. It's polarized. I want this powerful woman, but I want her to be easygoing and flowy and feminine. So this is all about, this is where we need to find the balance. And when we understand these energies is how we're able to navigate and come to that balance. So for men to become more feminine, we're going to see, so men, when they begin to nest, make commitments, take on responsibilities, these are ways in which men are going to become more feminine for women, uh, women who become interested in independence, success, and freedom, they become more masculine. But again, in both of these, having to be aware, you know, if we tip too far into the scale, because then, then we end up embodying too much masculine, too much feminine, and, and then we have to come back again. Um, so when fights and conflicts escalate, this is a sign that the instinctual needs of the, of the people involved in the relationship are not being met. So we end up getting stuck moving back and forth between the self-focus and relationship focus in the relationship. So self-focus is when, when you are in an, in a conflict in an instance where you are stuck thinking about your needs, thinking about what's missing for you, thinking about what that person is not providing for you. Whereas relationship focus is where you begin to look at the needs of the other person. So you can you can begin to shift out of the self-focus and look at, okay, I see, you know, that our relationship needs this, um, that our, my partner needs this. The problem with the relationship focus is often people will get stuck in thinking that in a relationship that everything is supposed to be equal, which is also not true. So uh, really what we want is harmony, which again helps when we're looking at you know, at, at the masculine and feminine, who is showing up as what, where, how, and understanding how to bring that into focus. So sometimes because our energies individually is ever changing, for example, there are going to be times where, where one person is going to be more in, you know, uh, more deeply in the feminine and to that other partner, it might look like, oh, wow, she's really in victim. She really seems needy right now, which is not the general trait of that person. But again, just, it could be a totally a hormonal thing, right? It really depends on where we are. It depends what's going on in our lives. And I'm saying this, this could be, um, you know, again, it could be man or woman. Men tend, tend to also slip over into this side where they're going to be more in their, in their feminine. So being aware of, of that balance. So understanding that there are times where it's okay for a person to be more needy. It does not mean that they are needy by nature. It means that this is a time. And this is like, what I was saying is like giving, right. If you're in that repulsion energy, giving what that person needs instead. So if a person is, is in this really tender place, giving that touch, giving that compassion, giving, you know, being that holding energy instead of, of jabbing at it. And likewise, you know, if, if there's a person who's really in that creation mode, really in flow, really showing up powerfully, you know, there's also honoring that and, and understanding this ebb and flow. So how this can look in the relationship is also that sometimes um, sometimes you will have, sorry, going back to that piece. So it's not equal. You can't expect everyone to just be showing up equally. Sometimes you may, sometimes there might be a person who is more giving 
And then sometimes there's going to be a person who is more receiving that is going to ebb and flow. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. I just, um, what sort of came up for me for that was, was actually um, if, if people aren't aware of, of that hormonal element, you know, so that um, the four phases of our menstrual cycle, um, the four phases of womanhood, you know, so um, I think it's really important to have some remembering around that um, so that you can give yourself some permission around, you know, showing up, um, you know, um, out of harmony. Um, yeah. 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 Thank you for bringing that piece through. And this is, and this is exactly, it is, you know, (laughs) being in our human is incredibly complex. We know it because we feel it, (laughs) but there's so much that is always going on in the background. Um, and so, yeah. So bringing through that hormonal cycle in itself or the, just the moon cycle, um, the cycles of nature. That's how I really like to look at it is, yeah, looking at, you know, where is your winter, where is your spring, your summer, your fall, and finding that flow through the month. And, you know, I would reason to say, you know, take a look at it for um, for men also, because my husband says the same thing. Like, he's like, I have my, he's cause like, I have my male period. Like, what the heck? <laughs> Why do I get like this? It's like, again, once a month, there's an energy where, Uh, And unfortunately for us, it tends to be at about the same time. Um, So, but, but kind of helpful. Um, We can just give ourselves that space, but definitely, you know, this, and this is exactly it is taking a look. And again, it just comes to, it's a new level of understanding, but this is what allows you to open into this depth within the relationship is, is when you understand and have, you know, not so far back in your consciousness, but have it sort of up front and center with or, you know, at least up front somewhere where you have the understanding that there's things like this, understanding cycles, understanding masculine and feminine energy. It's going to allow you to understand why you're showing up the way you're showing up. And when you, in a, in a relationship with two partners, when you can understand that, um, that both of, you know, have that awareness. This is where you begin to come into that relationship focus is understanding this about the other person also, not just so much like, well, I need this and I, I'm not getting this, um, actually looking at the relationship as a whole. Yeah. So to shift out of this cycle of getting stuck in that fluctuation between self-focus and relationship focus, the next level is merging focus. And this is where we develop these more mature expressions of the feminine and masculine energies. Um, So the feminine embracing more of this grace and power and masculine embracing um, perseverance with compassion. So this is a really beautiful balance to sort of look at that. When we merge, we have the feminine energy has a balance between grace and power and masculine shows up with perseverance with compassion. So still that power to hold, um, to hold space. And this, again, when we look at and bring it into the bedroom, this means that sex becomes a much more pleasurable and fulfilling experience because that, that level of safety and understanding and compassion is, is being anchored. So within the emerging energy, this is where couples will begin to admit their hidden fears. So they, where they feel safe to start going right into those places that scare them the most. So, and this is, this is huge what I'm about to say, (laughs) because you're going to go, oh my gosh, this is so true. Beneath all of the issues always lies the fear of loss, the fear of losing something. So if this is, this is what is always there underneath it all to be able to transcend that, what a person needs to do is to be able to name what it is that you are afraid of losing. 
right? And so that will fluctuate. It might not. That might be one, you know, one really powerful piece that you're always sort of revolving around, but it might change again with our cycles. But to be able to name out loud with your partner in the relationship what it is that you're afraid of losing. Whereas most commonly what we do is we go about battling with ourselves right behind all these veils and smoke screens, all of these unresolved points of contention. And we end up avoid because we're battling ourselves. We're coming up with all of these conditioned beliefs. Like what if this happens? What if that happens? All these things that we're purely making up and we end up avoiding asking for what it is that we actually need or desire. And this is such a big piece too, is, is for what, for women in general is, this is, it's, it's so hard to ask for what we need. And so again, when we can give ourselves the space to ask for what we need, this allows us to slip more deeply into our healthy feminine. And so this is really it coming to a place in the relationship where you agree to go towards, this is like what I was saying at the beginning, go toward whatever it is that you can't stand about your partner which is hard. And again, like I said, this, we can understand this does take a deep level of maturity because in the moment, it's usually the last thing that we want to do. There's that ego comes in and we're going, no way. I'm so annoyed. I'm so frustrated. I'm absolutely not going to give this person anything (laughs) is really what we're feeling. But to be able to transcend this and shift this, we actually have to go toward whatever it is that we can't stand about them. And this is where we start to merge with whatever it is that annoys us. And this really is where we come to this place where we stop trying to change our partner, right? Instead of trying to change and and, uh, that kind of goes back to that self-focus, like whatever it is that we need, we're trying to manipulate and change them. But if we stop trying to do that, then we immediately deliberately become more receptive and open. So in, um, in the relationship focus, often you will talk about what irritates you and take responsibility for whatever is yours in the situation. And you might make agreements not to do it again, but those things are things that don't tend to last. So, so that's great. And it's really important to do those things, but to, for that merging and energy is where we lean in to whatever it is that we can't stand about them. And this is, this is where we're going to see that merging. Um, from merging energy in a relationship, we move to cohesion focus. So this is where we actually start to listen and feel what the other feels. So this is where we begin to experience a deep level of empathy for the other person. Um, you might find that, um, yourself is like your being is drawn to share what you have. So, so looking in the relationship to share, it's like, and this comes back so much to mindset and to just self care, right? When we fill our own cup, when we take care of ourselves, when we realize that we are responsible for our needs and desires first, we're then able to overflow that into our relationship rather than fighting for what, for what you don't have. So instead of nitpicking and going like, you know, this really comes down to that mindset of, of owning your power instead of thinking that your power lies outside of you, right? If we're giving our power away to our partner, then of course, we're continually going to be expecting something more from them. So, so instead of, uh, so yeah, being able to flow and share our light, share our energy and, and remove that focus from fighting for what we don't have. So we're not going constantly like my energy or this relationship isn't fulfilling. This relationship is so empty, you know, all these, I'm not getting what I need. And instead of looking at like, wow, all of the beauty, the overflow, um, I have so much to give. There's so much here that we, that we have some, actually I'm thinking Jackie of your words, right. That you had shared the other day of, of being in that place where it's like, you know, thank you universe for all, of, all of the crumbs that you have given me, um, you know, but now show me, show me the gold nuggets. So it's this piece of, of being that way in the relationship, you know, thank you for all of the small things that, that, that we have acknowledging that really we have such an abundance 
um, within the relationship from, from small to big. And, uh, it's so funny. I always, I've started singing to my husband. Um, it doesn't, it's not even a jingle. It doesn't even rhyme, <laughs> but it's just, it pauses. And it's, I think because, because it's in a sing songy voice, it's just recognized. It's hard for me often with my husband, I will say things and he just doesn't hear, um, you know, I will say like, okay, this is what's happening tomorrow. And then he'll be like, wait, what's happening. And I'm going, oh my gosh, like I told you. So, and it comes down to also the same in terms of, of being able to express recognition or gratitude to our partners. So I always just sing to him, thank you for all that you do. <laughs> it's just, it's so simple. Doesn't even have rhyme or rhythm, but it's just a moment, to, you know, to just truthfully say that, like, and, and with that energy, you know, that's like, it is like a little, there's a little ring, a little jingle to it. Um, so, you know, really showing him that I'm just so grateful for all the things that he does, whether the, again, whether they're small or big acts, I see it. Um, okay. So that's, um, so, mer so moving from merging into cohesion. So cohesion being when we really start to feel what the other feels, sharing what we have instead of fighting for it. And so this, this practice of, of being in cohesion energy and really feeling this is cherishing those moments of intimacy by giving tenderly what you most desire. So this is actually, this is a great embodiment piece also. So in that moment, when you can say, I mean, you could completely slip back to self-focus, but still have that awareness of self. What is it that you want? What is it desire that you desire, but actually give that to your partner, give what it is that you most desire. So then you are giving away that, which you are most attached to in that moment. And this is, and this is the power of energy because that is a massive energy shift. Yeah. I just, um, I've got like this saying, do unto others what I want to be done unto me. Um, so that's, that's, you know, not just my husband, I'm talking humanity. Um, exactly. Yeah. So, um, you know, for example, when someone sends a newsletter, I like, I like to respond to the newsletter because I would like that of my newsletter, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So um, I really, thank you. I, it's nice to also put it in, um, in this context, context. Yeah. Oh, yeah yeah beautiful yeah and that's such an important piece because this is this is it in working with the feminine and masculine energies it's going to change our relationship to ourselves. it's going to change our, our relationship you know within our romantic relationships but this is and really even more important it is going to change our the way we engage with all men and women that's so beautiful i love that responding respond to, an, to the newsletter, um, especially these days, because often our, in, our inboxes are inundated with, with so many newsletters every day. Um, it's almost, you just bring that element of humanity back into it. Yeah. Beautiful. And, and that makes so much sense, right? When we're talking about cohesion energy and a cohesion focus, it just makes sense. <laughs> It makes so much sense that we would do that and treat others in that way. Exactly. So cohesion focus is really what we desire to get to. Um, this, this is a really fulfilling, um, I mean, this is going to be a really fulfilling way to be in relationship with another. The other, um, we can transcend even further into warrior focus and um, and again, you know, cohesion warrior focus is really where we want to get to. And this is where we actually face those worst fears. We, we face them head on so that we're no longer run by that sense of loss. So if we're afraid of being left, we be more intimate. If we need sexual release, we be more passionate. If what we're craving is security, then we give someone the safety of our friendship, or we be a better friend. If we need space, then we actually find a way to give it. So this is, this is that warrior mindset. And it's, it's just diving right into the dark, essentially. 
but through the dark, we come to the light. So, um, and this, in terms of healing conflict, what it allows us to do is to feel our partner's desires more keenly than our own. So it really is, it's, it's like what you just brought through, right? Do unto others what we would want done for us. And so, uh, and which we do, you end up receiving that, but because you are first giving, and this is, this is that laws of energy exchange, right? We, we give and we receive, we give, we receive, we receive, we give. So we get there either way, but there needs to be that flow and giving and receiving is another way of looking at masculine and feminine energy. Receiving is feminine, giving is masculine. So of course we need, <laughs> of course we need that reciprocation. Um, yeah. So that's actually, that's another way I should, I should speak into that at the, at the very beginning. Um, so this is it is we really in a relationship, we seek to see, we seek to understand, and we seek to know what others needs are so that we can give them without wanting anything back. You will likely get that, but you have to also be able to give without the intention of, of, of getting anything back. Um, so to move from that self-focus to the cohesion or warrior focus is where we have to look at where that division between the masculine and feminine energies are, because what happens is those often fuse into mutual desires for the other. We have this desire for the other to stand more fully in their greatness. And so that's a, that's a beautiful thing. Uh, realizing instead of, instead of, um, instead of shaming and belittling what we're actually looking to is to have, you know, both people. And that's really important because I've seen, you know, I have, I have worked with clients where I have seen, you know, one person fully go in and, and they're putting all this effort in the other has to be there doing the same thing. It's not easy and it's not going to happen overnight. Relationships change and relationships last because of lasting commitment and and mutual, um, mutual effort. And so, uh, yeah, being able to let go of, you know, the belittling and speaking about what's missing and focusing on seeing each other in their greatness. This is ultimately, you know, understanding that this is a God and a goddess that we are looking at. Um, and so when a, fe when feminine energy, their instinct is to parent. So this is so to really, uh, and again, that can go two ways, but in, in the way, when we are looking at someone in their greatness, uh, in that parenting energy, we have this compassionate desire to turn our men into the God that we know they are. So that's how our energy is given is to say, oh my gosh, that full awareness. This is, this is my God. How can I compassionately support him into his full godliness? And the masculine instinct is to cherish and protect life. These are the beautiful ways that, you know, the masculine gets to show up by supporting the women in his life to become goddesses, right? All women, not just, you know, not just you, but this is a way that we, and, and same for, from the feminine, you know, looking at every man and woman in this way and, and wanting to see them show up in their greatest, highest good. So to evoke the, the most expansive qualities from our masculine and feminine in our life, the feminine is um, not excusing careless actions or cutting the, the masculine down. She's really treating men with dignity and, and in turn um, receiving this honor. When women are, uh, when a woman is cultivating her feminine energy with mastery, she neither demands or craves security for herself. She's secure in the face of heartbreaking devastation and loss, right? She has, she's anchored, she's solid. She's able to, to move through that. And the role is to test and challenge her masculine energy so that externally to her, but also within in a way that these most life-affirming choices and decisions and solutions that she comes to, that she's intuitively led to so that they survive. So, um, Instead of making demands upon someone, she suggests options and then gives masculine the space to figure things out on their own. If we haven't learned this already, <laughs> right?
right? Men like to figure things out on their own. You can plant the seeds. So this is why, you know, suggesting options is really great, but allowing men the space to figure it out on their own and understanding that we can't manipulate and we can't fast track things. Um, and this is when she becomes confident. It, 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 it can be a little bit trippy. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah, there's well, and that's but I think that's just it is the way that you present those options. Yeah. Yeah. And when they feel spacious and without that demanding energy, they tend to come around more quickly. Um, and that's because when you come at it in that way, the woman becomes more confident, which which in turn makes her more magnetic. So those things that you're working towards come to you more quickly. And then um, this also opens, when a woman is able to show up vulnerably, she's able to open herself to this masculine energy whenever she wants, which again, allows for that magnetic flow. And then in the mature male, so this is, and like I was just saying, in a sense, it's, this is, you know, this man is treating every woman, every woman becomes his partner. Every woman is a goddess whom he desires to protect and provide for. It's just common, common sense. <laughs> it's how to be a decent human being. Um, and it's that it's what an honor to be that protective, um, compassionate energy for, for women. Um, I think that's the true, you know, it's almost the true definition of a gentleman. Um, while providing for others, he also cares for himself, right? So not, and this is often, this is, this is a way for women. We, we can also slip out of our healthy masculine as we, because as women, we are so, we're the nurturers, but we often forget to care for ourselves. So, so this is a way that we can even be aware of our own energy, but for the masculine, the same thing, provide for others, but also care for and nourish yourself. Um, also gaining, gaining control over his own childish emotion, emotions, right? There's still that energy of that little boy. And so when it, when it comes out really fervently, you know, the healthy masculine has that ability to control those emotions that come up and also encourages the women in his life to express their freedom and individuality, right? So, so allowing them to express in their feminine and their sensuality in their individuality without dimming that. And in this way, he actualizes his dreams. He becomes more self-assured and gets to inspire women to become more relaxed in expressing their feminine. So it's not this, um, you know, misogyny or patriarchal control that often gets so ingrained into the masculine awareness. Yeah. Oh, this, it just reminds me. So in New Zealand, we have um, we have the highest youth uh, highest youth in male suicide rate in the OCD. Wow. Um, and my theory, my where where I think it comes from is, um, we've got kind of got this sort of rugby. Um, she'll be right. Um, beer drinking culture. Um, so for the male to show up with any sort of creativity or um femininity is is really quashed um even even still in our school systems you know it's um we're going to turn these boys into men and um yeah, yeah so um it's interesting you know when when you work predominantly with women um we're so rising the feminine but um yeah it'd be great to see some more I know that's it's happening but more of the rising of the feminine in, in, in the mix in in the the yeah yeah but I mean definitely as we show up and you're you know you you know from your relationship I know from mine um I don't even use we don't use words it's just energy exchange and um yeah it's, there's no there's not a lot of conversation you know it's 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 showing up it's the yeah. energy yeah mm. Yeah. You get to this mutual understanding. Mm. Yeah. And I love that. And I think that's so important, um, you know, for anyone who's listening to hear that also that that's because I think that, and just the way that you're describing that it really expresses, um, how it can feel right. That it, you, that we can get to that place where 
where you, you can just be that energetically attuned. And when I speak into some of the embodiment practices, I think this, this really will make sense, but it's, you know, where, where, when you understand that it's two souls who are also in the relationship, not just these two physical bodies, it's not just about the physical connection. And this is, I think often what happens too, when people get so pulled into the separation energy is forgetting that we also need to be meeting on an energetic level, right? Where our souls, where we can come, we try, to, we try to come together physically, but what isn't happening before we try to come together physically is, is understanding that our souls and our spirits need to come into alignment also first, truly first before we can, because our, our bodies are powerful and our bodies are going to, you know, we, we're going to contract and we're going to feel restricted if, or if we don't feel that energy is in the same place. Um, and so this is, and this, again, I've talked to so many people where it's, this is what happens and, um, sex can become very uncomfortable. It can be painful. Um, if we don't bring the souls back together on, on that level. And, and when you do practices consistently where you are working from that point of energetic connection, um, that's what begins to happen is you are reading each other's energy and there's less need for words. I will be very honest, Ian and I language and communication is a really big piece for us still. Um, and I think that will fluctuate, you know, that will really fluctuate in, in all relationships, because again, there's the different, um, you know, erotic profiles in the way or, or the love languages. So, so that'll look very different, but I think I'm, and I'm so grateful that you brought that through because that's really powerful to hear and understand that it can be just reading each other's energy. And I think this is also so, so true. And, um, and why I like to teach about not just this, the, the divine feminine, but also understanding the sacred masculine, because we can't find that balance if we don't understand it. And absolutely. This is one of the beautiful things that we get to do as women who are sort of, yeah, experiencing this rise of the divine feminine, um, because we can then begin planting these seeds and we can bring in this wisdom into the relationship, which like you said, we, you will see, um, shifts and growth and it's not comfortable all the time. I mean, it, it really, took a lot of focused attention. And, um, again, cause there's two people involved and triggers, <laughs> triggers and all of this. So, um, yeah, it's a journey, but it's, it's really important for men and, um, and especially over, you know, the suicide numbers have just have for men have gone up significantly over the last two years. So absolutely. They need, they need the support they need the sacred space holding just as much as we do for as women. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for that. And, um, and so for, as the, as men are, are able to honor their, this masculine mature, maturity, what that will look like in, in sex is again, is this concentration of his pure desire that he is able to pour his energy into life. So, and this is again, the beauty in sacred sex. That's what the masculine energy is giving is his life force energy. So he feels this desire to pour that energy into life and in the bedroom. Um, so yes. So what we really want to look at is, you know, what do we want? What do we need? What also makes us different in the relationship? And this is answered not by just, um, a conclusion, but by this greater desire to understand ourselves and each other. And this means that then sexual intimacy becomes a source of unending discovery, right? So looking at it, not as like, as an abrupt end, like that there's a conclusion that we must get to, but understanding that it's a continual unfolding. And I love this. It makes so much sense to me because the Yoni, you know, is the sacred space in it. That's that's our connection to the infinite realm, right? So if we think of the cosmos, we think of the quantum realm, this is our connection to infinity. And, and we have that in our body, in that Yoni space. So when we tap, this is, this is why I teach about sacred sexuality. When we come back into right relationship with our Yoni, we are coming and, and we are opening that portal in within our body 
so that it can flow into our life, into our relationship, into our business, right? It's a way that we can begin to just tap into the source of unending discovery. This becomes the mindset that we just have about life. Um, what, what can I discover today? Um, so some other practices that you can take with yourself or take away and into your relationship. So, so that very first big one that, that I hadn't initially considered including, but I think I, I want to just highlight this as a practice is in those instances where you find yourself in conflict, um, with a partner is to look at what is it that you are thinking you are missing? What is it that you are thinking that you need? And come to that practice of giving that instead is going to be so powerful. Um, another very simple but very powerful practice is to just sit. And this, so these two practices, actually all three of these practices are what, like what I was talking about is aligning your energy with your partner. So giving yourself this space, um, if you are, you know, one before you're coming together for a sacred sex practice, or if you're at that place where you're feeling so much separation that it's really hard to even come together in a sexual practice, begin doing these practices because this is going to bring your energy at a soul level back together. So if you um, just sit cross-legged face to face and then set a timer for three minutes or longer, but at least three minutes. And what you're going to do is just gaze into each other's left eye. And the left eye is, is like the pathway into um, seeing the divinity within that person. So gazing into the left eye for about three minutes or longer. So this is a really powerful way to begin looking at this other person as the divine human, as the divine nature, as the God or goddess that they are. And it's, again, you're, you're focused, you're in front of one another, your energy centers are aligned and you're looking at the other person at a soul level instead of just a physical level. The second practice is one of the practices. Uh, this actually is a way to, um, you can actually access an energetic orgasm without penetration through this practice. Um, I talk about it more in depth in my program. So I'm just, but going to go over it quickly today, but, um, the, the male again, or if, again, depending if it's not a heterosexual relationship, whoever feels like they're embodying the masculine energy is going to sit on the bottom, the feminine, um, in their lap with their legs sort of so cross-legged, but wrapped around each other. And then what you're doing here is you are aligning your chakras. So your chakras are basically up against one another. Um, the lingam, this one, uh, is powerful because you'll actually feel that energetic connection. Um, and it can just be tucked under the yoni or having the lingam pressed up against the, uh, against the yoni or the, like the clitoris. And so that you have that root chakra activated. And so you can sort of get an idea of how, I mean, although this isn't necessarily leading to anything sexual, you can feel the deliciousness that's sort of present through the practice. And that's powerful because that's, we want to activate that Kundalini energy. That's what we're rising essentially. And so then setting up a way in which you can communicate the female to the, or the feminine to the masculine. So she is guiding the breathing. And so what you're doing is you're activating and breathing into each chakra. So first breathing into and awakening the root chakra. Once you feel that energetic center activated just by touch is, is what I like to do is so just rubbing, you know, the backside of the shoulder and then focusing your energy, rising up to the sacral energy center. Once that feels activated, rubbing the back shoulder, and then you're going all the way up to the crown. So at this point, again, because you are moving that Kundalini energy with the breath, um, and another one of the practices that I teach is pineal is a pineal, a breathing practice that activates the pineal gland, which you, again, you can essentially do with this also. So you are also potentially moving the spinal fluid, which when it presses against the pineal gland, which is when you kind of get this brain gasm, um, or an energetic orgasm. And so 
when you get to the crown, this is where you can kind of come into that energetic orgasm, do this frequently, right? So uh, when you start, you might not get that experience, but keep with it because it has to do with, with building that connection between the energy centers and the stronger, um, the, the, the more that you do it, the stronger that connection is going to be. And the more that you're going to access that orgasm without penetration, which is incredibly powerful. And some people actually feel like it's, it's an orgasm that they prefer over penetrative orgasm, but we want all the different kinds. That's something that I talk about Re reasons, the reasons why I'll go into, um, I go into in my sacred sex, uh, 101, but doing that one. So that's one way to begin to align your energy. And also when you can begin to practice or, or when you do begin to feel that orgasmic energy, this bringing this practice into penetrative sex can also, it, it also incredibly enhances that practice. And the last one that I want to bring through today is, um, inviting in some blindfolding or not, but allowing yourself to explore the erogenous zones with touch. So using different materials, using a feather, a scarf, um, oh gosh, my husband used a, like a cold stone the other day. Um, and it's just, it's, it's so fun because you're, especially if you're blindfolded, you don't know what the material is. So you're, you're just purely having this, um, sensory experience. So, uh, so whatever it is that you're called to choose for materials and exploring the erogenous zones. So this is almost like body mapping. And this is powerful because for you and your partner, you are going to learn, um, what your body is really connected to. So, so going over the whole body, you know, uh, erogenous zones, just off the top of my head, behind the knees, the inner, uh, the inner arms, of course, um, exploring the yoni, um, the neck, the ears, um, around the nipples, the belly, right. Once you get down into the pelvic area, just exploring, you know, through the thigh, the thigh crease across the lower belly. And this is that opportunity to just really begin to be aware of, of for you, what your body really likes, what really feels good for you. And then it's also, it's also giving that same feedback to your partner. And so again, this is just a purely a sensory experience again, where your energies are, you're giving yourself an opportunity to be an intimate space together again, where it doesn't necessarily have to, to lead into a sexual experience, but just the space where you feel that level of intimacy and safety and connection. So those are three practices that, or I guess four practices that you can bring in. Um, if anyone has ever practiced those, I would love to hear in the comments. Um, if you're watching the YouTube live stream and, um, and other than that, take those uh, with you. I hope that they will be fun to explore with. Um, and I hope that, you know, that there's been insight, that there's been new awarenesses, new levels of understanding through all of this content. And if you are catching the YouTube, um, live stream, not through one of my links that sent you there. If you're just catching it, um, because you managed to find it. Um, if you are enjoying this conversation, head over to my group, sacred sexuality and Facebook, um, so that you can catch these weekly, weekly trainings that I do, and also come in and connect with the powerful group, um, that we have there. And, um, yes, these happen every Wednesday at 7 PM Eastern standard time, uh, which is, 11 a.m. in New Zealand. And uh, if you like this content, please like it, please share, um, please share. If you know someone who is in a place in their relationship where they are looking, you know, to reconnect, where they are looking to build this intimacy, share it with them, whether you share the link directly or share it on your Facebook page. Um, but you know, this, this could really help someone, um, or, or people, you know, this could, this could be really powerful for a relationship. So, um, thank you everyone. Thank you, Jackie, for joining me on zoom. Um, yeah. And if you are catching this on the replay, the recording again, I really encourage you come and join me on zoom because it's really nice to be able to be in energy together, to be able to stop and ask questions and, and dialogue. So, um, sending you all so much love, uh, Jackie, I hope you enjoy the beach. Think of me while you're there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, and I will see you all next Wednesday.